we're not gonna be able to see people's comments. Oh no, that's true. <laughs> Dang it all. Okay. I'll sit over here. That's okay. I'll do this. Okay. I'll do this. You sit. We're live. Okay. No worries. Okay. I'm manning the ship. I'll try not to jiggle this ottoman too much. Okay. Hey, everybody. Let me come on this side. Let me say hi. <laughs> this is totally going to be so goofy. I know, but oh well. Anyway, so totally unprofessional. <laughs> oh, we're just two crazy chicks. Don't worry. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Sarah Baker with Baker's Acres Canine Academy, and this is my dear friend and former client, still kind of client. Um, <laughs> introduce yourself. I'm Bethany. I love dogs, and I love training dogs. She does. She's a little crazy. And I'm here in Orem, so. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we are, we came up with this idea to hold a dual interview, kind of like individually, and then we talked, and we are like, hey, wait a minute, you thought that at the same time I did? Wow, that's cool. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do that. Um, we're... I'm going to ask Bethany a couple of questions, and I'm going to be on the other side of camera so I can read everybody's comments when they come in, and also um, be more of the, like the interviewer. And then we're going to swap places, and Bethany's going to ask a couple questions related to dog training. And it sounds like Bethany's husband's Yeah, my home. husband's just walking in the door. Yay, so, so we get to have a cameo. Hey, yes, we're going to have a cameo. Hold on. Cameo appearance. Come on in. You're on Facebook Live. <laughs> <laughs> Come sit down next to your beautiful wife and say hi. And then. Aww. Oh, oh, cutie pie. Say hi to the world, Sid. Okay. <laughs> Looks like Erica West has joined, and hi, Jonathan, and hi, Amanda. Awesome. Hi, Erica. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm going to move my phone so I can actually read the comments. Yeah. There we go. I got pizza. Thank you, Sarah. You're welcome. Nope, oh, that's really bad. Is this a dual? Yes, we are doing a yes, dual Facebook is. Live. What happened to all those cool cases that we got? The tripod, I guess. I know. Right. Well, because Facebook Live is oh, portrait that's view that's and not that. landscape no, view. The, the clippy thing only does landscape. I know, it's so dumb. <clears throat> okay. Alrighty. What are you doing? Oh, I'm leaving. Get, get out of here. <laughs> Erica says hi. Awesome. There we no, go. You're in the way. Does that work? That's not work. Over, right? No. Sorry. I can't step over. That's. There we go. Been friends long enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bethany. Okay. First question: What was life like, even like six months ago, three months ago? Um. As far as dog aspect, six months ago, <clears throat> um, we, like in the car, Carbon has been known to jump out the window. Um, he goes crazy when On he, the freeway. On, on the freeway. <laughs> okay, yes. on the freeway. Because there was another dog in the bed of a truck next to us. Oh my gosh. So, and then... Um, um, he would pull on his leash. We had one of those harnesses that was the front harness. And so Sid had to walk him because I couldn't handle him. And I'd get really, really, really angry. <laughs> yeah. And then I'd yell at Sid, and then it wouldn't be a good night overall. <laughs> um, Carbon is really, his, his fingernails are really pronounced. So when he jumps, he would scratch. Um, my boyfriend's, not my boyfriend's. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> My brother's girlfriend. <laughs> I love it. Sit here. We can't say that stuff. <laughs> um, um, they came to the door one time to drop off, uh, to drop something off, and his girlfriend couldn't even get in the door because Carbon was jumping all over her. Wow. And she's like, oh, no, no, it's okay. I love dogs. And I was like, no, 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 you don't love this dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so that was Carbon, and... For those of you that don't know, Carbon uh, is... How a, much is he? How much does he weigh? At the time, he was 80 pounds. An 80-pound boxer mix, well, okay? Yeah, boxer pointer mix. So he's a big guy. All right, tell us about Kalar. And Kalar is a 70-pound shepherd husky mix. And she's a gorgeous dog, by the way. Yeah, she's my baby. 
and mm-hmm. um, she has always been, she's always wanted to please. Like, she's always come when, she's, when she was called, and she's always, but she's, she was always wanted to please us, but she was always nervous and whining, and she, the last six months, she started attacking other dogs. Um, we were at my parents' house, and my parents had a lab who was very well-mannered, and they were, they were not fighting over the same toy, but they both wanted to get the same toy, and she grabbed him by the scruff of the neck and tried to, like, throw him around. It was pretty intense, and fur went everywhere. And then we went to the little dog park here in our neighborhood, and she was in the dog park, and another German Shepherd tried to get in, and she bolted and went right into him and grabbed the scruff of the neck and threw the dog around. <laughs> That's crazy. So... And so, not, not only is that dangerous, right, but the last year, six months we've had these dogs, I've been embarrassed mm-hmm. to take him on walks because they would pull and tug and my neighbors who would be like, oh, hi, Bethany, and want to talk to me, couldn't because they couldn't get close to me because my dogs would be jumping all over them and my Kayla would growl and it would, it would turn into me being like, oh, I'm so sorry, and apologizing and not even being able to talk to my neighbors. And so we didn't take them for we don't take we didn't take them for walks because it was just so embarrassing to me. Not that I don't love my dogs, but I I, I don't expect other people to love my dogs the way that I do. Right. So it it was it was very chaotic. They're they're good dogs, we love them, they you know, we play with them, but it was just very chaotic. There's no structure, they kinda did their own thing. We didn't really have any rules for them. So Well, you're the typical for for mama. We were the average Joe. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You didn't know. Nothing yeah. not, didn't know. So now you're equipped with the right tools and the training. So what what was the catalyst that you, just that you when you decided to start looking for a dog trainer? When Kayla attacked the the other shepherd in our neighborhood area, just because it was so direct. The other time she'd attack dogs, you always blew it off. We're like, oh, they were fighting over a toy, or yeah. they weren't introduced cor- correctly. But this time she saw the dog and she just went right, right for him and bit him. And that's kind of like, oh boy, yeah, this is something we can't handle. It made my heart sink, and I was like, I didn't really. I was worried that if their other dog was okay, but I didn't want had to have to give up my dog. Like, what if he complained to the city? You right, know? right. Like, I didn't want to have to give up my dog and to have her be put down or given to a shelter or whatever because I just stuck my head in the sand for so long. That's not fair. Right. Right. Then how did you find me? I went to bed and I had a dream. Oh my gosh. (laughs) And in it it said... was the, let's see, what, with the training, what was the best thing, or what, what part of training resonated with you the most, and actually, when you actually started to see big changes? Um, that part? Does that question make any sense? Yeah, 
Like, are you talking about, like, the emotional side of it, or, like, psychological side? Are you talking sure. About, like, whatever, side? whatever aspect of, of what we've been doing as far as working together, what part of it helped you the most to train your dogs? Um, so I think it was the second day into, mm -hmm. um, if, if you guys don't know, Sarah took Kaylar for a two-week board and train. So Kayla was gone for two weeks and Sarah was uh, trained her. And I was training Carbon here at home. So I think it was the second day, <clears> the <throat> second full day of training Carbon, where number one, I had the right tools, because before, it, it, I couldn't get him to pay attention to me. And everybody was really good intentioned and they were like, well, feed him treats and if he jumps on you, turn your back to him. And really good intention crap. <laughs> 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 That's a good way to put it. So I hope I'm, I hope if nobody's watching that. for her for her particular dogs for my particular yeah those te those techniques wouldn't have worked. Yeah, they may have worked for other dogs, but not for Kalar and Carbon. Yeah. They they are much more stubborn and hard headed. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for clarifying. Yeah. For my dog. There you go. There's, that's the professional way to say it. <laughs> okay, girl. Okay, so um, it was about the second day in when I had the prong collar, and Carbon was paying attention to me, and and I was like, oh my gosh, I can do this. And it, it was a mental click where... Where before I felt like I, I was at the mercy of my dogs. Whatever they decided to do, they did. Whether they wanted to jump or bark or jump out the window or... And I was always reactive to them. I was always going after them. I was always... They would act first and then I would go out and then I would act second. How often did you take them for walks? I... We never took them for walks. I'd take them to my mom's house. It was a big backyard. And I'd let them play maybe two to three times a week. And then the rest of the time, they had each other to wrestle with around the house, and we'd play with their toys and stuff. But And did you dread getting in the car every time? <laughs> yeah, because we, we had to hook them up to separate sides of the car, and any time they'd see a dog on the, on the outside of the road. <laughs> so <laughs> it was so embarrassing. I was driving down State Street, and there was a dog walking on the side, and... <laughs> My my little my car. I just have a Jetta, so my car is little, and my car would shake. While Seriously, I was at a her stop car line. is her car is would shake, rattle, and roll. Okay. And while I was sitting at a stoplight, and I couldn't do anything because of her dogs, <laughs> and I felt just so embarrassed, like I couldn't look at anybody around me. I was like, this it was just so terrible, and. I, it, it, it was just humiliating, and so I, I couldn't wait until the light turned green and I could drive and get away from that stimulus. Right. right. So, um... Okay, sorry. I yeah. got you so, sidetracked. So, um, then, you, you very rarely did you even take them on walks, if at all, and then when you did go for walks, you only took one. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I'd take one at a time. Now, what do those walks look like? <laughs> um, awesome. I did a Facebook Live with both dogs in one hand, and I was holding my phone, and I wasn't even afraid that they were going to pull, I was going to drop it. Um, so and they, they were walking in a heel. They were walking in a heel, and they were paying attention to me. I think that's the big point, because even Kalar would generally heel. Right. But she'd never look at me. She'd never, like, I was not even there. She's always distracted. She's always distracted with something. So now, when, like... Every maybe 30 seconds to a minute, whenever I tell them to heal, they'll look up at me. And they're like, oh, hey, Mom. And yeah. I'm like, hi. <laughs> and I have, like, that split-second communication with them. There's somebody here. There's somebody here on the end of the leash, as you say. Right. So it's, it's, it's awesome that I talk to my dogs now. And not in the, oh, I love you so much, Mom. But, like, in, we have, like, an adult conversation. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you have a real conversation where they're yeah. not, like, they're, they are their own individual. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, with Carbon, what was the biggest change that you saw after going through training with Carbon? The 
biggest change for him was it was almost like I felt he was grateful. Like the first few days, it was like he was living like this. Mm. And then when I took control, he was like, oh, thanks, Mom. Like that was like the initial reaction I felt from him. It was like, thank you for being in control because I'm so tired of having to proactively defend myself or go after things. Or he, It was just like a big thank you from him. That was the big thing. And then the second thing was, our relationship has improved, like the way we play, the way I feed him dinner, the way we, I talk or when I go to my parents' house, just like our whole relationship has improved. Like he sees me now and I see him and it's awesome. That's really cool. It's a good thing. That's really cool. Yeah. And what about Kaylar? What's the biggest change you've seen in her? <clears throat> she... Well, well, the most important one is that she's not, she may still be dog aggressive, but there's no more opportunities for her to be dog aggressive, now that I've learned. Right. Um, until we get more practice under our belt. Right. Um, but the biggest thing is, it sounds kind of weird, but it's her eyes. I had a picture before and after that I sent to Sarah, and before, her eyes were always wide and worried and stressed and not, not dilated just, dilated and not relaxed and now now even though she has her she's anxious so she'll whine and stuff she's not fight or flight right now a lot of the anxieties is like a habit to break mm -hmm. instead of like a continued state of mind almost oh this was a dog Kalar was a dog that would break out of the crate yeah Okay. Did it, did they ever, excuse me, did they ever, like, try to, did they ever destroy the house at all? Killer, Killer would get into books. We have a bookshelf. That's right. And she'd take the I books remember off that. and she'd tear them all up. She wouldn't eat anything, just tear it all up, and I'd come home from work and books would be everywhere. I remember that. And she tore up my Ender's Game, which is, like, one of my oh, favorite books. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to replace that for a good girl. <laughs> I know. I'll do that. Yep. That'll be my Christmas present to you. But, uh... <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Okay. It's <laughs> a secret. A world secret. I know, right? <laughs> Here we are. Facebook Live. Don't Public tell video. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> she needs a copy of Ender's Game. <clears throat> and so, so with Kalar, I felt like... Kalar has always wanted to please. Carbon mm -hmm. is always super independent. He didn't really care. <laughs> right. He was just like, you guys are here to feed me. And then I'll do he's, whatever I want. He's more like a cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Kaylar, she, she always wants to please. I think that's even part of her breed, right? Like right. Shepherds. And so she always wanted to please. But since I had my issues and I was struggling and I was not what she needed, right. she felt like she had to protect herself, defend herself, take care of herself. Right. I wasn't there. Right. You know, so. If you don't mind, I'm not going to share any of your story, but I'm just going to put a plug in here. If any, if any of you that are watching have your own issues, personal issues, and you're trying to take care of your dog, please take care of yourself first. Yeah. Because it's it's just like being on an airplane and fixing the oxygen mask. You have to put your own on first before you put on the mask of the person next to you. Regardless of how much you love them and care for them, you have to take care of yourself first. Otherwise, you cannot, you do not have the ability to take care of them. Absolutely. Okay. And since, since my emotional state was all over everywhere, um, <clears throat> I couldn't even manage my own emotions to keep myself calm and steady. Right. And Kalar being extremely sensitive mm -hmm. to, she's a very, very sensitive girl. She picks up on my emotions before I even know I'm feeling them sometimes. It's that, right. it's that intense. Um, she picked up on that. And so it, 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 was, it was kind of a bad combination. If I had known when we got her, I was like, oh, look, a cute German Shepherd puppy. I know I want a German Shepherd because they're so awesome looking. And, oh, I'm so cute. Let's take it home. <laughs> Which is... 90% of people. 
Right. 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 That's what it is. But our relationship had become so, and I like the word Sarah uses, it had become so toxic. Right. Because I was using her as an emotional crutch. Um, I'm using Kayla, my dog, as an emotional crutch. And she couldn't handle it. She doesn't have the personality. Right. And the tendencies to handle that. Carbon? Absolutely. <laughs> I hug him and cuddle him and cry at him and he was like, oh, and he doesn't care. Home. He doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even notice I'm there. <laughs> Where Kalar took it very personal. She did. And, when and I it would, was her personal mission. When I would cry and stuff, she'd literally come over to the side <clears> of the bed <throat> and put her head on my head and snuggle under my arm, and she would feel it like she knew something was wrong, and it would, it would, like, that's not, and, and I'm like, oh, she loves me, and she's trying to comfort me. No. No. She, she didn't know how to process all right. these emotions. And she she was, was she was trying suffering. in her own way to help you, but she didn't know how to handle those emotions mm-hmm. when they were put on her. Yeah. And then she would channel it to those other dogs that she would try to attack. Because yeah. she felt like every other dog was out there to harm <clears throat> Mama. Yeah. Okay. Alright, I think that's about all the questions I have. Do you have anything to add? Um, just... If you guys, if anybody who's watching has normal dog problems, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the average Joe who's raised an average dog has normal dog problems. Um, this may sound kind of cheesy, but there, there's hope. It Amen. Really is. Amen. It's, <clears throat> your dog is not a bad dog. Yeah, and you're not a bad and owner. And you're not a bad owner, and... You don't need to feel embarrassed or humiliated or any of those negative emotions. Um, you just need to take the actions to help your dog. Yep. And helping Carbon and Kalar has changed my life. Even if <clears throat> I discovered that this wasn't my passion and I didn't want to go into dog training, it has been really introspective mm-hmm. that my dogs are kind of the barometer and I can see how they are acting and it makes me take an introspective look and it's helped change it's helped change me I think more than the dogs right so I'll just put a plug in here really quick Bethany has just started her very own dog training business yes okay (laughs) I give her my full support she's done an amazing job with Carbon and in a fantastic job at maintaining Kalar. Okay? These dogs are not easy. These dogs are not easy. And she did a fabulous job. I wanted to, I want everybody to know I did not touch Carbon for the first I I think I've handled him maybe two times, yeah. three times. Yeah. As far as leash goes, as far as being around him like that. Yeah. Um so all of that training was Bethany. Okay. So those of you that are watching on Bethany's end here, if you know Carbon and you know what he was like, that was all Bethany. Okay. That should be testament alone to her skills. Okay. You're welcome. Now, the fact that she's been able to ring in Kalar and keep maintain. and maintain her and and on, not just maintain but you've been able to carry on her training and get her in a better space yeah. a dog a dog like Kalar she's gonna need a while yeah. okay she needs to take time yeah. so um but yes if you have any dog issues or you know probably the best thing for that the the best thing that Bethany can help you with is getting your dog to walk nicely on a leash. Yep. Okay? If you're tired of your arm coming out of its socket <laughs> and getting rotator cuff surgery and back pain and all that stuff or from your, your dog... Hus- or you can't even walk your dog. Yeah. Your husband or spouse or whoever else has to walk if, dog. If your dog has... If you have been neglecting taking your dog for a walk because it is such a hassle to do so, call Bethany. Okay? Contact Bethany and then... She will contact me if she has any questions, and we will work together to get your dog to be happy, healthy, and have you guys have a healthy relationship together with your dog. All right, let's switch it up. I don't know if Bethany has any questions for me, but... I think I just have one or two questions, so we'll switch. 
All right, my hands are getting tired anyway. <laughs> Girl, you like that. you're too much. Okay, you got it? I do have it. All right, if you need to change positions, you can. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh. Okay. I'm such an old woman. <laughs> there we go. All right. <clears throat> you like Fab? <laughs> I right, love peace. it. I'm here. Okay. So, my question for you is... <clears throat> what, what is the most common advice you give to people who have dogs with problems? Ooh. Like something that these people who are watching today can maybe implement in their life or at least become more aware of so they can start working on it. Don't be afraid to say no. <laughs> Serious. Okay, there is this whole big, like, I, I, I'm not going to diss other trainers or other styles of training. That's not me, okay? Mm -hmm. But there is this campaign, as it were, that's going out these days that says, don't say no to your dog. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. But when a dog is jumping on me, when a dog, be, okay, let me give, let me tell you this little tidbit. I have a broken back. Okay, I broke my back when I was 17 in a car accident. When any dog jumps on me, even a little, you know, 10 pound, 20 pound dog jumps on me and puts weight on any part of my body and shifts my weight from one side to the other, it hurts my back. Now, if the dog is physically hurting me, I, you better believe it, I'm going to turn around physically tell him to knock it off. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm going to use whatever level of intensity they're using on me in match at and tell them to stop it. Okay? Don't be afraid to say no to your dog when they are doing something that you disagree with, that is life-threatening, or that... Um, will get you into big trouble or get the, your dog into big trouble and your dog will end up at the shelter. Okay? So in Bethany's case, we had to tell Kalar, knock it off. Do not go after other dogs. That is bottom line, do not go after other dogs. Which I think we're going to post some video. Yes, we will. Uh, we I'm, actually have some video of Kalar's issues. I'm not quite done with the video yet. Okay. I'm going to add um, some after. I've got all the before stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and we've got it all ready to go. But I'm, I'm adding more um, after video showing Kalar out with other dogs and perfectly well behaved and, and yeah. learning how to be social with other dogs without attacking them. So with Kalar, we had to address it right off the bat and say... Don't you ever, ever, ever yeah. go after another dog like that. Um, unprovoked. Okay? Now, if she was being attacked, that would be a different story. Yeah. Okay? But unprovoked, yeah, knock it off. Okay? Um, same thing with Carbon. Don't jump out of cars. <laughs> knock it off. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Kalar, don't tear up books. <laughs> like the books are my favorite. <laughs> Which books. you wouldn't think, but can be life threatening. Car yeah. Carbon had a eleven hundred dollar surgery because we fed him soft toys unsupervised. Yeah. And so, yeah, it yeah. ended up in his tummy, and they had to cut it open and take it out. There was a post I posted a few days ago, maybe earlier this week or last week. Um, a seven-month-old Labrador female had ingested nine socks. Oh, I saw Did that. Did you see that? Yeah. Nine <laughs> socks, uh, like a terry cloth or, you know, a, a little hand towel or something like that. Yeah. And a pair of underwear and a bunch of little other um, inedible objects that she just found around the house, and she ate them. And she... Over the last 
what was a couple of days or something like that. She, her owners noticed she wouldn't drink. Yeah. She wouldn't eat. She was acting lethargic and just not her normal seven-month-old puppy self. Yeah. They took her in. They got some x-rays done. The vet said, we got to cut this girl open. They cut her open. They pulled out all of this stuff. And it was not into little bits and shreds. It was a full sock. Yeah. A full pair of underwear. A full towel. Okay. Those type of behaviors, that, that behavior is actually called pica. Eating stuff that is not edible is called pica. Uh, getting into the garbage. Jumping on the counter to get at food. Um, what are some other behaviors? Oh, electrical cords. Yeah. Okay. Chewing on electrical cords. We Right now, Christmas time, everybody's got Christmas trees. Everybody's got their Christmas lights. Um, household plants. Some plants are poisonous to your dog and cat. If your dogs are doing these type of things, getting into this stuff like that, sure, fun, it's cute. Oh, look, he did this. No. Okay? Life-threatening. Anything like that, you need to tell your dog no. Okay? And if you need help with that, telling your dog no, contact me <laughs> or contact Bethany. Okay? <clears throat> Any, okay, next question. Um, for the people who are watching this, what is one thing they could start on tonight? That they could, if their dog is not listening to them, is jumping on them, is... What's one good exercise for them to start? For instance, I told one of my friends, when you feed your dog, um, take a handful and make them look at, you know, make, make them look, look you in the face and then say good and give them the treat. And that, that can start focus. Do the focus exercise. That's a good one. So is there another small one that literally takes a few seconds that's convenient and already that they'll do in their lifestyle? Yes, there is. Two of them. One... The easier of the two that you can start incorporating right now. Thresholds. Oh, yeah. Making your dog wait politely at the doorway. Helping your dog be respectful. Asking permission. Um, and really, thresholds is more of just like a very specialized area of the overall theme of invitation only anything so if you like to have your dog up next to you on the couch that's fine as long as you invited the dog and the dog didn't just jump up of his own accord because what that happens what happens typically is the dog starts to think that everything in the house is his so once he's on the couch and you want him to get off, what happens a lot of times is when you tell the dog to get off, they're like, <laughs> it's my house, my couch, you're not going to tell me to get off. And they'll even start to growl and snap at you. Really? Really? Who bought the couch? <laughs> <laughs> Whose house is this? Who pays the rent? Who pays the mortgage? I don't think so. Yeah. Get off the couch. Okay? Yeah. Um, couches, sleeping in bed, all of those things are privileges. P R I V I L E. Privileges. <laughs> yeah, I won't go. Anyway, it's a privilege, not a right. Okay? Dogs have rights of shelter, food, um, earned affection, okay? You love them unconditionally, but you give affection when it's earned, okay? Which can be hard for, more hard for the human than it yes. for the dog, because yes. I struggle with that. Because that's a personal fulfillment. That's a human fulfillment, not a dog fulfillment. Yeah. Okay? So, number one... Thresholds do that ASAP. Um, and thresholds is any doorway or um, archway if you have um, bedrooms, you know, or separate areas like that. You can teach your dog 
to stay out of the kitchen. You can teach your dog to stay out of any particular bedroom. You can teach your dog to stay in one room. You can teach your dog to not bolt out the front door. Okay. Second one is a little bit tougher. Crate. Serious. Crating your dog, teaching your dog to be crate trained, be okay with being in a crate for a while, is going to save your dog's life. Seriously. Because, number one, it keeps your dog confined. It teaches your dog, or it keeps your dog, um, when it can't be supervised, that's the safe, safest place for your dog is in the crate. Okay. It prevents book eating <laughs> or <laughs> destroying. Yes. Book destroying. It prevents cord eating, yeah. Which, laundry eating. She was eating the books because we left her out while we were at work for right. eight to nine hours. She wouldn't do that when you were when we were home. At home. No, right. she wouldn't. Right. So yes, teaching your dog to be calm and quiet in the crate. For any number of hours, okay? The longest I would go would be your standard eight to nine hours, okay? That's... It's pushing it. That's pushing it. If you can, get somebody... Or if you can, come home during your lunch break. Yeah. And let your dog out. Um, if you can't, then hire a sitter to come in a couple of days a week. Um, or find a doggy daycare. Yeah. That Which, is... there are apps on your phone, guys, if you're watching this on a smartphone. There's mm -hmm. Rover, and there's Dog Vacay, there's a lot of apps out there. Right. Or you can always reach out to Sarah, um, or myself as well, we can give you some good references. We've got some references for mm -hmm. you, yeah, absolutely. Um, so thresholds and crate are probably going to be the most <clears throat> helpful right uh, off the bat. Okay, well what would you say to people who... Um, say, well, that's inhumane to put my dog in a crate because I've run across lots of people who are having, number one, they're having trouble boarding their dog because no dog trainers or, jet, or kennel, places. kennel places will take a dog unless it's crate trained. Right. So what do you tell these people who, it, it, it sounds like it's coming from an emotional place when they say, I would never put my dog in a crate. You know what's cruel? Taking your dog to the vet cutting him open, <laughs> and pulling out nine pairs, or nine uh, socks. Sewing them up, and putting them on medication for pain. That's cruel. Because of your idiocy. <laughs> that, uh, that's the blunt version, guys. Um, you know what else is cruel? Is not creating your dog, and your dog gets out uh, of your house, or jumps your fence, or... Uh, bolts out the front door and gets hit by a car. Yeah. That's cruel. Um, not creating your dog when your guests are over or when grandma's visiting and your dog jumps on grandma and grandma falls and has to get uh, her hip replaced because she broke her hip. That's cruel. Crate your dog. Yeah. Teach your dog to be okay in the crate. Teach your dog that the crate is not a bad thing. Teach yourself, okay? The crate is not a bad thing. The crate is where my dogs eat their food, where they take naps, and where they sleep at night. Okay? And also where they go when we leave the house. All right. That, and, and my dogs, they love their crates. They like, if, if, as soon as we come in from outside, they go right into their crates. They're like, sweet, bedtime. If you make it part of the daily routine, it doesn't become a big deal. Do it while you're at home as well. So like, during dinner time, your dog shouldn't be under your feet waiting for food to fall off the table anyway. 
or they shouldn't be up on the table <laughs> begging <laughs> for food. Okay, they shouldn't be in the kitchen while you're preparing dinner because you've got a hot, a, a boiling pot of water. Okay, that's dangerous. If the dog is right there and under your feet as you're moving this, you know, pasta to the sink to drain it. No, that's a bad idea. Okay, dogs out of the kitchen. What better place for them than in the crate? Okay, um, yeah, that's how I would, be, be wise, people. Don't be emotional. It's not an emotional thing. Be wise and take care of your dogs. Teach them what is acceptable and what isn't. Okay? Any last questions? Nope. Lots of good stuff here. Okay. I don't have any more questions, though. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining. The we can swap cameras now. We can say hi. and I was just going to do a goodbye to our tribes. <laughs> Hold on, let me be smart with Sarah and turn it around. Alright, <laughs> sit down. We'll give a last minute, Ugh. last hurrah. Okay. <laughs> you hey. a funny face this time? Yep. Hey, <laughs> screenshot everybody, screenshot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thanks okay. for watching everybody, and those that are going to be watching the replay, thank you. Very much. Share, like, if you love this, send it out. Share this information with your folks, with your peeps. Um, this information needs to get out there. Okay. Absolutely. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.